you're trying to break into the software engineering industry, the number one guiding principle you need to follow is to look and be as senior as possible. Be as close to a senior software engineer as you possibly can. Trying to just break into the software engineering industry as an entry level software developer or a junior software developer is incredibly competitive. The word is out that it pays six figures. You don't need a degree to get started. So a lot of people are learning basic coding and trying to land a junior software engineering job with basic coding skills. The problem is the supply and demand dynamics are not in your favor as a junior level applicant. So for example, there may be this many junior software developers applying into the industry and there's only like this many open junior level positions. So they're all competing, but there's not that many positions open. So it's very competitive. The reason there's a low demand for junior software engineers is because software development is very much a talent profession. It's not a factory job with predefined steps that anyone can follow. This is a deep skill set, so it's not easily replicable. The difference between a top performing software engineer and a bottom performing software engineer may be around 1,000x, just for example, where compared to a cashier, maybe the difference between a top performing cashier and a bottom performing cashier is like 5x. So when the difference of performance of a top software developer and a bottom performing software developer is so drastic, it goes to reason why companies would much rather hire someone who is highly skilled at software development than a low skilled software developer. A company would much rather pay six figures for a skilled software engineer than multiple entry level junior software engineers being paid minimum wage. This is how it goes in talent professions. It's not like a bunch of lower skilled people can make up for the work for one high skilled person. If anything, it would just cause a mess. So as an analogy, think of a skyscraper, a senior developer building a skyscraper. He's building it with proper foundations and he's making it so that way this building can be built taller and taller and taller and the foundation is strong and it can last and it's maintainable for the foreseeable future. And each decision they make on building the building higher and higher, it depends on previous decisions that they've made. So as time goes on, the difference in skill level will affect the trajectory of the quality of the building exponentially as we go into the future. Because if we think about someone builds a building with a bad foundation and they start just stacking bricks higher and higher, we can build it like maybe to 10 feet pretty high but then after that like you can't really build it that much more it's gonna keep falling over and it's gonna be hard to build it past that so even though like the first 10 feet it might be easy for a junior developer to compete with a senior developer when it comes to like building smaller projects when it comes to building bigger projects the senior developer really has an advantage because they're building up the strong foundation they're using the best code practices and they're doing it in a way that allows the system to scale and to stay maintainable to stay readable not to turn into spaghetti code so this is what makes junior developers a risk as well for companies, it's a liability because they may end up degrading the code base, or if not, they need a lot of handholding from senior developers to make sure that they're doing things the right way. They need to get code reviews. It's gonna take time away from the senior developers who are very proficient at their craft and they can build a lot of features. They're gonna take that time away to train up the junior level developer. And initially that's gonna result in overall lower productivity for the feature development of the software application. The goal is long-term, it's gonna increase the productivity though, because hopefully eventually the junior developer gets up to speed and then the senior developer can go work on his other thing and then the junior developer becomes a mid-level developer can start working on tasks on his own but if the junior developer cannot get up to speed it's wasted effort so that's a risk a company makes when hiring a junior developer they don't know if it's going to pay off or not now no need to get discouraged the thing is most people suck at coding they don't they just know basic coding they can't build novel projects they haven't seen before and so this gives you an opportunity if you're serious about getting to the software engineering industry is to actually get good at your craft. Be better than all the basic bootcamp grads, college grads who just know basic coding. You need to actually get your hands dirty, get some experience and be confident actually building software. If you can do that, you're gonna stand out from the competition. But most people trying to land a junior software engineering position they can barely code. They know basic coding, but they cannot reliably come into a company and produce value as a software developer. So that's why there's a thousand X difference. It's not that these developers that are more senior are so good and so talented. It's more so that most people just don't develop the skill set that's needed to perform well as a software engineer. So because there are a lot of junior level applicants applying to the industry with just basic coding skills, they can't really build stuff on their own. And because of that discrepancy of like a thousand X difference of a top performer and a bottom performer, this 
This is why a company would much rather prefer a skill developer. So they're going to filter the applicants and the easiest way to do that is filtering by experience. They wanna see if the person who is applying has a track record of delivering value for a company already, has already been there and done that. Not someone who's a liability, who hasn't proven that they've worked as a software engineer before and they can do the job. Don't get me wrong, you can 100% get a job as a junior level software developer, but it is competitive. And so if you wanna skip the competition, you wanna make things a lot easier, you wanna position yourself as someone who's already experienced, who has been there, done that, has the track record, so that way when a company looks at your profile, it gives them the confidence that you can come in and do the job and that it's worth their time to invite you for an interview. See, the thing is, there are hundreds of thousands of technical recruiters in the United States recruiting software engineers, and they get paid six figures to recruit these software engineers. So obviously there's a demand for software engineering talent. You just need to look like that top talent that all these recruiters are trying to recruit, and you will get headhunted and you will get interviews. So instead of just doing some personal projects, getting some kind of certificate, having just a college degree or just graduating from a boot camp, what you wanna do is you wanna do projects that you can position as professional experience on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, that demonstrates a track record of solving real world problems for a business. And these problems should be complex, they should make you look competent, and give a company confidence that you've been there and done that. So this is why my program where we help people learn valuable software engineering skills and we help them land a job in the software engineering industry, we provide them an apprenticeship. They work with me, I have a code base, I have a real software company that they can work on and I can train them on the job. This will help them actually get skilled at software development. And it'll also be experience we can put on their resume to position themselves as a valuable software engineer who's been working in the industry. And this is really a cheat code to getting into the industry way faster than anyone else. It makes things a thousand times easier if you can make it look like you've already been there and done that. If you're interested, you can click the link in the description to book a call with me to learn more about the program. Otherwise, if you're doing this on your own, you know, you can do some free work for a company, you can do some open source projects, you can do your own personal projects, but attribute those personal projects to a startup that you've made. Uh, make it look like professional experience and solve real world problems. Don't do just some toy projects that everyone's showing you how to build on YouTube or some courses. Solve real world problems with software because those are the kinds of problems that you're actually gonna solve when you get hired at a company. And so if you can demonstrate that you're already solving real world problems, that's gonna position you as a much higher value software engineer who's worth being invited for an interview. And here's the thing, to solve real world problems with software, you're not gonna be able to just know basic coding. You need to actually get good at your craft and become a good software engineer. So this is not a get rich quick scheme. You're gonna have to get good at your craft. It's gonna take some time but this is why you're gonna make six figures and this is why you're a valuable asset to the economy. It's not a skill that anyone can replicate. And so this is what it takes. And so if you're serious about becoming a software engineer, do the work, don't try and take shortcuts. If you wanna fast track yourself into the industry and acquire these skills fast, book a call with me. Do some of those things that I've mentioned on your own and that'll set you apart from junior candidates. Hope that video was helpful and I wish you the best of luck.